Today we are going to be talking about how these beautiful chrysalises can be this shiny mirror-like gold. Here's a fun fact. The word chrysalis, which is the pupil stage of a butterfly, comes from the Greek word chrysos, meaning gold, and it refers to the bright golden coloration of many butterfly pupa. We are going to be talking about structural color, and if you want to know how structural color is different than pigments and exactly what it is, I would check out the pin video. Okay, now that you've done that, let's talk about how this is possible. This mirror-like structure is produced through a process called metal, which is very convenient because they're very metal-like. Metal means multiple endocuticular thin alternating layers. And it sounds kind of complicated, but basically all it's saying is that there are multiple thin different layers of the exoskeleton that are alternating between exoskeleton or chitin, which are these dark lines, and either air or water, depending on what that species uses, which are the lighter lines. So basically you have a layer of exoskeleton and a layer of air or water, and then a layer of exoskeleton and a layer of air or water. And the more layers you have stacked up, the closer to gold and silver you get, and the shinier and more completely mirror-like reflective you are. So that's how they're shiny. But the next question is, why are they shiny? That's a question that we have a lot of hypotheses for, but nothing's been fully supported yet. So let's talk a little bit about this. The first hypothesis is that maybe they look like water droplets, but there are butterflies that lay eggs that look almost exactly like water droplets. Also, many of these pupa don't live anywhere near water, and many of them are relatively large, and there's also beetles that are shiny and gold, and they move around, so they're definitely not looking like water Water droplets. Another idea is that it's for thermoregulation and to prevent overheating, but these golden chrysalises and some of the other ones are found in areas where it's actually not hot. The cloud forest gets really chilly and I wear like a jacket regularly in the cloud forest, so that doesn't seem like it either. Another idea is that the gold is for warning coloration, basically telling predators I'm toxic, don't eat me, but this golden tortoise beetle can turn itself red when it's threatened. If you poke it, it will push its clear blood through those different exoskeleton layers, changing its color from gold to red because it reflects light differently now. So if gold is to tell predators not to eat me, why do you have a gold thing that can turn red? Another hypothesis is that maybe it doesn't do anything at all, but you can see that these unrelated different organisms are all gold or silver and they produce this color the same way. So it seems like it's kind of important. The hypothesis that me and several other people who live in these ecosystems have is that it's actually for a type of camouflage. Let me explain. Here is a picture picture I took of one of these chrysalises in the cloud forest and I took it with my phone. Behind my phone was my business card at the time and you can literally see my business card almost perfectly reflected in the chrysalis. So the hypothesis that me and several of my colleagues here have is that they're actually so reflective they look like the environment around them. Here's an example from Jack Yams, who took it with foliage and leaves around the chrysalis. This is a golden chrysalis, but you see how it immediately turns green because it's just reflecting whatever is around it. Unfortunately, all of these different hypotheses are difficult to support in the lab, either with predator studies or thermoregulation studies. It's just really hard to study why something is the way it is in a laboratory setting versus its environment and control for all of the different factors. It is also completely possible that all of these different insects that I showed you that are gold are gold for different reasons. Maybe some are thermoregulation, maybe some are camouflage, and maybe some are aposomatic coloration. Take it with a grain of salt, appreciate how beautiful nature is, and revel in the wonder of how mysterious and complex our biological world is.